everybody. Welcome to Mindset Monday. It's Jeff Henderson with you, and I'm so honored to have my very good friend, and and, and he's releasing all kinds of th- stuff, um, but Gerald, congratulations. It's book launch day, man. Come on. It's so good to be with you, Jeff. So we're recording this a few days before the official launch, but um, Gerald Fadiomi is, uh, he's a preacher, a speaker, an entrepreneur, a leader, and he's preached several times, both uh, at both campuses and for our student ministry and my kids. Um, you know, when you have a friend that is influential with your kids, you'll discover this, Gerald, you and Kylie, years from now, when you have somebody that's a friend of yours and that your your girls look up to, that's who you are to Wendy and me. So we're so grateful for you. And uh, man, congratulations. Um, before we dive into the book, for those that may not be familiar with your story, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, love Gwinnett Church. You guys are like second family uh, to me. Uh, I'm based out of Atlanta. I'm right down the road in Johns Creek, actually. Uh, married to my beautiful wife, Kylie. We've been married for three years. Uh, we have two identical twin baby girls who were born in the coronavirus pandemic. So that's been a little crazy for us. Uh, Wesley Grace and Zoe Faith. They are three months today, the day that we're recording this. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I uh, spent five years on staff at, at our North Point churches, um, at Browns Bridge in particular, and, and now work with college and young adults. I lead a monthly gathering uh, for college and young adults as well as a conference, uh, and then get a chance to travel and speak and write and hang out with cool people like Jeff. So that's me. Well, fantastic, fantastic leader. God's doing amazing things through you. And we want to talk about adversity. That's what your book is about. Sure. But before we do that, though, you, you mentioned um, your girls being born during the coronavirus. Speaking of adversity, tell us a little bit about that story for those that may not be familiar, because, oh, my goodness, our hearts were breaking as you, you, you both you and Kylie were going through this. Yeah, so that story has been pivotal uh, in my in my life and my wife's life as well. It's actually the basis of the whole book. Um, so context, I, I travel a good bit of weekends out of the year. I just come back from an event. I got back in town on a Friday. Um, and that was the Friday that everything was kind of blowing up with coronavirus. Yeah. And so I uh, thought I had made it out clear. I was like, I'm home now. We're good. Uh, that Monday, I started not feeling super well. And so I went to the hospital uh, late Monday night, got the coronavirus test, was told it'd be 48 hours before I got my results back. And in the middle of the 48 hours, my wife went into labor. Um, She did not know she was going into labor. She just thought she wasn't feeling well. So she was going to get the coronavirus test as well. Uh, And she gets to the hospital and the doctor says, you're having babies in two hours. (laughs) So uh, I get in my car, immediately drive down to the hospital to try to be with her. And when I get there, I get a call from infectious disease that says, hey, um, because we don't have your test results back, you cannot come into the hospital. And so I ended up missing the birth of my identical twin girls. I actually found out that they made it into the world in my backyard. Mm. Um, Yeah, so super hard. My my wife had to have the coronavirus test as well. And so when they were born, she couldn't see them or hold them at all. Um, We actually didn't meet our girls in person until day three of their life. We met them um, that Friday. Uh, We got our test results back as negative. We got to hang out with them for a few days. Um, But then that Sunday, we got another phone call letting us know that the NICU where our girls were had been shut down. Um, and so it was another three and a half weeks, um, yeah, that we did not get to see or hold our girls. So the first month of their life, we were with them for a total of four days. Um, definitely some of the hardest seasons, one of the hardest seasons of our life, um, seasons of days of depression and just heartache, pain, devastation, um, but also really, really sweet moments with God and really sweet moments as a family. Um, and we just learned how to bounce back from this adversity a little bit differently than we had in the past. Yeah. yeah. And that's what was so hard for all of us too, because we couldn't really do anything. We couldn't get around you. We couldn't get around, you know, we couldn't go to the hospital. That's one of the many challenges of this season, yeah. but hence the title of the book, <laughs> when life gives you limits. I mean, Oh my goodness, there couldn't be a better title uh, for that situation. But the reality is all of us can go, oh, I know life has certainly lobbed a, a, a several lemons our way. So yeah. I always love asking authors uh, and, and communicators like yourself, okay, where'd you come up with this idea? Where did you, you know, how, where's the creative process? And then you, I want to talk, I want you to talk about the, the strategies that can battle adversity, but can you, obviously this situation, this, yeah. you know, with, with the girls, but now, where did you, the creative process, where did you go, huh, life and lemons, and I want to write about this? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it was a complete accident. 
I randomly posted on my Instagram just in the middle of, of trying to navigate it all when life gives you lemons, just thinking of the phrase, you know, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And so I posted it. And the next day I decided to post it again. And the next day I decided to post it again, really for no reason at all. And then people started asking me what it was about. And I was like, I don't know what it's about, but maybe it should be about something, right? Um, and so the title kind of came out of nowhere. Um, the concept behind the book did not come out of nowhere. So the concept came from me sitting in my backyard. Um, it was right before my wife had given birth. And I had this moment where I just lost it. And I cried out to God like David did in the Psalms and just begged him to help, um, screaming at the top of my lungs in my backyard. So my new neighbors probably think that I'm crazy, but... Uh, <laughs> I was out there and just having a moment with him. And as soon as I could calm down, it was like a still small voice that said, remember the sermon you preached two summers ago on Joseph. And I went, I do remember that. And so I went back and read through the notes. And as I read through the notes, it was as if God was saying to me, you know how to preach that this is true, but now I need you to live like it's true. Wow. And uh, it convicted me and challenged me, um, but it also led to us handling the season of adversity completely differently than we had in the past. Um, it's still been hard. It's still been painful, but we've grown together as a family way closer. We've grown in our relationship with God way better. Our communication has gotten better as a family. Um, and so I ended up writing this book out of response of that, that God taught me something in the season that was helpful for me. And I prayed that it would be helpful for others as well. Now, I, I want you to, I don't want you to give the whole book away because yeah. we want everybody to go buy the book, but um, give us a couple of the strategies that, that we can, because all of us are facing adversity in one form of it or another. And I heard this quote that we're all uh, in many ways facing the same storm, but we're in different boats. So that circumstances might be a little bit different, but they're all kind of storms that we're facing. So as we, because I know everybody watching this is going, yes, I've got my sh- my story and my share of stories of adversity. So could you give us an, a strategy or two that the book reveals that, um, that we can use in our battle against adversity? Yeah, so let me give you the two goals of the book and then I'll give you one of the practical strategies in the book. Um, the goals of the book are, are such, one is to cause us to not react to the adversity that comes our way, but rather respond to the adversity that comes our way. It's interesting, uh, if, you're, if you've been following along in the sermon series that you guys are in, better for it, Um, I did not know that Andy was going to be preaching on this idea, um, but it's exactly what the book is based out of, right? It's the story of Joseph and the way that he responds. Um, What I want us to do is slow down and ask the right questions to be self-reflective enough to be able to respond rather than to put our head down and just try to get through. Um, There's a quote in the book that says, I don't want to get through it. I want to grow from it, right? And so our deepest moments of adversity can be the things that grow us the most if we'll lean in and ask the right questions. So to be not reactive, but responsive. But uh, secondly, and probably more importantly, is to redefine the word good for us, right? Um, I can't help but think help but think of Romans 8, 28, and we know, which I love the fact that Paul starts with that statement, and we know, right? Like, this isn't up for debate. This isn't a question. This is just the reality of our God. And we know that God works all things together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. I've read that verse my whole life and took out his purpose and replaced it with mine. God works all things together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to my purpose. So if everything's going my way and things are going good, then God is good, right? Um, But whenever things aren't going the way that I would like, then I start to question the goodness of God. What I'm learning in the season is that the goodness of God is not determined by our circumstances, right? And in actuality, when we really understand what Romans 8.28 says, it actually redefines the way that we view the circumstances that we're in and our adversity that comes our way. So we have to ask ourselves the question, what is his purpose, right? What is God's purpose? Because if we understand that, then we can then understand the adversity that we deal with. I think the purpose of God for us is really simple. It's two things. Um, It's one for us to be conformed into the image of the son, meaning to be more like Jesus, right? Um, And then secondarily, to make disciples, to lead people to know Jesus. So if God's purpose for you and for me is to be more like Jesus and to lead people to know Jesus, that means anything that allows those two things to happen is actually good, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean it's not painful. I don't want to take away or make light of of the adversity that, that we may be in. It doesn't mean it's not painful. It doesn't mean it's not difficult. It doesn't mean that you wouldn't take it away if you could, but it can still be good at the same time, right? Like we know this, Jeff, because of Good Friday. The irony of the day that we call good is the day that Jesus died the most excruciating death known to mankind, 
right? And so we know that pain and good can live in the same place. And so I want us to redefine the way that we see good um, because then it allows us to, to address the adversity that we face differently. So now that we've talked about the philosophy, let's get like in the one really practical um, application. Uh, the first question that's mentioned in the book is in chapter three. It's what's in my control? Uh, and the idea behind this question is as a Christian, I've always been taught and believe is true that God is in control. He's sovereign. He's in control. He holds the world in his hands. We all believe that, right? Um, a lot of times for me, and I think for a lot of us, because we know that to be true, it can lead to a passive response where we say, hey, God, you're in control. You got this. I'm just going to wait for you to fix it, right? When in reality, we probably have more control in the situations that we're dealing with than we think. And we have an active part that we get to play in the story of God, right? And so the question in the first chapter is to go, hey, what are the things that are concerning me about the adversity that I'm in? <clears throat> what of those things are actually in my control? So let me, let me identify those. I'm going to create action steps for the things in my control, and then I'm going to learn to release the things that are concerning me to God on, on a daily, moment-by-moment -moment basis, right? This is actually what Paul wrote in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, present your requests to God. And when you do, you get back the peace of God, that, that uh, the peace of, of Christ that will guard our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So the idea uh, from that first chapter, just to be super, super practical, write out the things that are concerning you, circle the ones that are in your control, and then do something about those. Create some action steps, make the phone call, give the apology, um, go to the counseling session, right? Like do the things that are in your control, but then release the things that are out of your control to your heavenly father and do that on a regular basis. And I think that leads to more peace in the middle of the adversity that we're in. That was a long answer, Jeff, but that's how to answer it. I love it. I, and I also love the tangible act of writing these things down. I think too often we get stuck in our heads and we don't let these thoughts come down on paper. And sometimes yeah. when you write things that you're worried about or whatever, you look at it on paper and go, why, why am I, why am I worried about that? It's yeah. okay. Here it seemed pretty big on paper. It's just something happened to it. So I love the, the exercise you're asking us to do. In fact, the book really is kind of a, a workbook in a sense that yeah. there's great content, but then there's these, there are these exercises that you're leading people through, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want you to read the book. I want you to work through the book, right? Like I want the book to be a tool to help you navigate the adversity that you're in. What you mentioned, Jeff, is really, is really interesting. When I came up with that activity, I did not understand how important and helpful it actually it, it actually is. Um, I've been working with a licensed professional counselor on like a supporting course that goes with the book. Um, and she said this, she said that anxiety is often a result of our adversity. When we go through something really difficult, we have these feelings of anxiety. And that anxiety is such a physical thing that it actually takes physical activity to get rid of anxiety in some cases. And that writing is actually, is actually therapeutic. That when you write, like physically, not type, but like physically write things out, something happens in your body that releases the weight of the anxiety that you're carrying because of that circumstance. And so it's not even just like a good biblical practice. It's not just a good spiritual exercise. It actually is physically and scientifically proven to be helpful to us as well. And this is great for those of you that are leading small groups right now. First, first of all, thanks for continuing to lead small groups at Gwinnett. But this would be a great book for you to get and, and work through um, as we move through the season. Through the season. Yeah. Um, Gerald, I, I tell you what, it's hard to launch a book right now when we can't actually get together, right? I've talked to so many friends of mine that are authors that have had to shut down, like, um, especially back in March. They had big launch parties and everything just got shut down. So, yeah. Let me transition, but how can we help you launch the book since we're in a season where, you know, we still can't necessarily get out in large crowds? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, TheLemonBook.com is a great place to send people. If you have friends or family who are in a season of adversity or battling anxiety, uh, as I mentioned, I worked on a course. So the course is available there. There's three free resources to help people navigate. My favorite resource that's available is actually a, a checklist that you're meant to work through with another person. Um, if you're having feelings of anxiety to help you identify if counseling is the next best step and you should see a professional. Um, and so we've made some of those available for free. And then also links to the book are there. Um, on June 15th, which is today, you're watching, um, you can post on social media and just tell people that the book is available. Let them know that it's out. Um, yeah, my prayer is that it'll be helpful to some people. And so I don't really have a number or goal of people who read it in mind. Um, it was just my own personal process that helped me. And so uh, if you know someone who needs help or if you know someone who's wrestling, um, maybe this will be a great tool for them to work through as well. 
And it's so impressive that you were able to do this in the midst of the season. So, because I know you're getting about three minutes of sleep a night. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it basically works like this. I hold a crying baby right here and I type like this. <laughs> and then you switch arms with babies, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, well, man, we love you. We're so grateful for you. Thanks for all that you have done for us and continue to do um, at Gwinnett Church. And I want to tell you this, I, for those of you watching, um, I've never written a, a forward to a book before and Gerald asked me to do that. So, and I'm not going to ask him how many people he had to ask before he got to me, but look at there. So, um, I remember telling Jesse and Cole, my, my daughter and my son, Hey, Gerald asked me to write the forward. They're like, really dad? Like, like what's that about? So anyway, Hey, thanks for the high honor of that. And is there a hashtag for the, uh, for the book or do we? Yep. The lemon book. Right. And it's the lemon book.com. That's right. Great. Hey, Congrats, man. Big day, launch day. We love you. Thanks, Jeff. Love you.